Does having a prior C-section increase your risk of secondary infertility? Hi, Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford and I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. I'm a fertility doctor and I am here to answer all of your top fertility questions. And this is one that I hear all the time. So one thing that is interesting is that the incidence of C-section is definitely increasing. So if we look at 1990, about 7% of the population had a C-section, and most recent data in the U.S. is over 20% are having a C-section. And if we look in other countries like China, Brazil, and the Dominican Republic, that number is more than 50% of the delivering population. So we know that C-sections are increasing. What we also know is that infertility is increasing. So is there a correlation between the two of these? Quick pause is if you are here to learn about your body, we'd love it if you would subscribe to this channel, leave a comment, like it, and share it with your friends. That is how we grow and help more people understand their body. So we do have several large studies looking at this. And what we do know is that the live birth rate is about nine to 10% lower in people who've had a prior C-section versus those who've had a prior vaginal delivery. So presumably this is a fertile population who's had a baby before trying to get pregnant in the future. Now, one nuanced discussion wherever we're talking about secondary infertility is that some studies may categorize people as not getting pregnant who never were trying to get pregnant. And I think it's very important to say that C-sections, any birth really can cause some trauma and birth trauma might be a reason why somebody may not try to get pregnant again. And that can skew our interpretation of data. I am not here to judge a C-section. I had two C-sections. There are many different reasons why people have C-sections. Sometimes it is urgent, non-urgent, medically indicated because of the baby or because of mom or a variety of reasons. So I'm not here to shame or to judge. I'm just here to talk about facts. So when we narrow this down and we start looking at studies of people who are trying to get pregnant. So in a large scale study of over 6,000 people in each group, prior C-section and prior vaginal delivery, who were trying to get pregnant, we did see differing rates of infertility. So 19.5% of people had infertility if they had a prior C-section versus 8.3% if they'd had a prior vaginal delivery. When we look at people who are actively trying to get pregnant, we also see that it takes longer to get pregnant in the C-section group. So two to six months longer if you've had a prior C-section versus if you've had a vaginal delivery. And what's interesting in that data is that that is regardless of the indication for the C-section. So if you think about, oh, if it was traumatic or urgent, maybe you'd have a higher chance of it taking longer or wanting to wait longer, but this is actually for all indications. So even for non-urgent, very well planned out C-sections, we saw a longer time to pregnancy. If we want to go and look even more narrow, we can look at IVF studies. So in a study looking at patients who had IVF with ICSI, and there were 1,300 people in each group, prior vaginal delivery and prior C-section. So if you'd never conceived, you were not in this cohort. So this is people trying to get pregnant with a subsequent pregnancy. And there was a difference in live birth rates between these two populations that was statistically significant. So 15.9% of the people in the prior C-section group had a live birth after a transfer, and 23.3% of people had a live birth after a transfer in the vaginal delivery group. So this is a pretty big difference, even if you're going through IVF. Now, Caveat, those numbers are lower than we are usually quoting, and this is because these are not genetically tested embryos, and this data is from the early 2000s. However, there's still a difference between those groups, even though the IVF process is the same. And so that brings us to why are we seeing a difference in C-section, and is there anything that we can do? So the hypothesis for why this might be happening, one, as we already said, initially could be birth trauma or delay of pregnancy. Two is that people who have underlying infertility are often older when they're trying to get pregnant and C-sections are higher in people who've had IVF. C-sections are higher if you are older or you're having complications. So that group, if you've had a prior C-section, might represent some underlying infertility or subfertility. Three, the C-section itself, cutting into the uterus, is not a benign process. So even if everything heals fine, does that change how the placenta can implant into the uterine cavity? Number four, can it cause scarring either of the fallopian tubes or inside the uterus from this process? And number five, can you develop something called a C-section defect or a, a niche or a ismocele? So 
So an ISMO seal is a C-section niche. What that really means is when you're doing a C-section, you are cutting through the layers of the uterus. So you have the outer layer, which is the peritoneum, you have the muscular layer or the myometrium, and you're entering into the endometrial cavity, which is where the amniotic sac is. When you take out the baby, you are making sure that you are closing these layers back up. And so a C-section niche is where there's at least two millimeter of a defect in the myometrial layer. And you can see this on vaginal ultrasound. And this is a picture of what this will look like. Now, sometimes these are totally asymptomatic, meaning you may have no idea if you have one, but often a common symptom can be abnormal bleeding. So specifically very prolonged menses because there might be some endometrial blood, menstrual blood that gets in that little area or spotting in between your periods. So we actually have seen studies showing that 50 to 60% of people after a C-section may have an ISMO seal, but only about 30% are presenting with vaginal bleeding or abnormal bleeding. So there's definitely a portion of the population who is not getting this diagnosed because because they are asymptomatic and they may not know about it until they come to a fertility clinic. Now, you can see this often on ultrasound and you can definitely see it in further investigation. The hypothesis here is that maybe this increases inflammation, it changes the ability of the placenta to be able to implant so you could have implantation failure, or it can also develop fluid. So because the blood supply is different and you have this defect, you can develop fluid inside the endometrial cavity. Now, there's no study about doing embryo transfers in the presence of fluid. Obviously, in natural conception, you don't know. But from clinical experience, if I see fluid, I'm not transferring an embryo. I'm trying different protocols, I am aspirating it, or we are evaluating why that might be present. However, we do know up to 42% of people with an ISMO seal will actually have some abnormal fluid in their endometrial cavity of the ones that we're diagnosing. Now, how do you fix this can be surgical. So it can either be laparoscopic or it can be hysteroscopic. Essentially what you're doing is you're reapproximating the layers so that you can hopefully get a better closure. What these studies have shown is a decrease in the fluid. So in a study looking at laparoscopic repair, we saw that 40% of people had fluid beforehand and only 7% afterwards. So that was definitely an improvement in that fluid layer. Also in that same group looking at laparoscopic repair, there was greatly improved implantation and conception rates. So 40% of these people had failed an embryo transfer. However, within two years of the repair, 52% conceived naturally. And most people who conceived did so within three months of trying. So that definitely shows that this might've been underlined as a cause of their infertility. In a smaller study looking at hysteroscopic repair, which is a camera through the uterus as opposed to a camera through the abdominal cavity, this was smaller, but it did show that 100% of people got pregnant after the repair of the ISMO seal. So I think that the take home message here is that C-sections can happen for a lot of reasons. And if you are trying to get pregnant after a C-section, we definitely wanna give your uterus time to heal up because we do not wanna have decreased implantation or abnormal placentation or have further placenta issues. If you've had a C-section, most people are recommending at least a year of letting your body heal. And some people even think 18 months is better. At very, very minimum, six months. I mean, that makes me nervous. I won't do an embryo transfer for at least a year, but I know some people who will at the six month mark. But the reason why is we want that uterus to be able to heal up all the way. Now, if you're having abnormal bleeding after a C-section, long periods, lots of dark spotting, this warrants an evaluation with an ultrasound to see if you have an ISMO seal. If you are also having issues with bleeding, or you're diagnosed with an ISMO seal, or you have infertility, then you might wanna discuss, is this worth doing surgery on. I will be honest that I don't do surgery on everybody. I often look at, did I develop a good lining? What is my history? Do I have fluid in the endometrial cavity? And in some people whose clinical scenario matches, yes, they're great candidates, and we should consider surgery and letting the uterus heal before we go and do an embryo transfer. But other people might have an ISMO seal and everything else looks fine and we proceed and the pregnancy is absolutely fine. So I don't want you to think, oh my gosh, I must have this, I must do something. 
It appears that there's a large portion of the population who likely has an ISMA seal based on this data and is not getting it repaired yet is getting pregnant without any issue. So if you had a traumatic C-section, if you lost blood, if you had an infection, if it was urgent, or if you're having any abnormal symptoms afterward, or infertility, and now you're trying to get pregnant and you're having these issues, it definitely might be worth evaluating your anatomy, which can be done with an ultrasound, a saline sonogram, an HSG test, a FemView, some type of evaluation of both your uterus and your fallopian tubes to make sure that everything has healed appropriately. I always say you can't worry about things that you can't fix. If you had a C-section, you can't help that and you shouldn't let that dominate your thoughts. However, most patients have never heard of a C-section scar defect or an ISMO seal, and it is something you should be aware of. You should know the signs for it so that you can know when to go and to seek help or get an evaluation. All right, friends, thank you for being here. Please ask any questions below. As always, you can follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD, or you can check out the As A Woman podcast. Thanks, friends.